Shalom Royalty, uh, it's Ellie here, and I'm not going to be before you guys too long today. Just wanted to let you guys know, I may, buy, and yeah, I may not be make, I may not be making um, daily videos for like the next week or so. I am leaving, um, so I'm packing right now and getting ready for uh, hitting up the next destination. I am going on a vacation with my family, and so. Yeah, that's what's going on with me right now. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about um, what I'm learning. Well, reminding myself of in the book of Genesis. I have read it before, and certain things just didn't hit the way that they did the first time. I am outside, so excuse me if I am glistening because it is hot and it is the high afternoon. I think it's a uh, two something. Yeah, it's 2.37, so it's pretty hot outside uh, right now. But yeah, so I'm just doing laundry, packing, doing all that stuff. But um, So I'm in Genesis right now. Chapters, I think I'm in chapter 44. And it's just very interesting, a lot of the things that I've been putting together according to what I've been learning from different spirituality um, influencers on YouTube, um, different teachers of the Hebrew faith, and uh, different Christians, different prophetic and uh, apostolic people. And so, um, understanding the book of Genesis from a perspective of a... I, I don't... Is the word reformed proper? Where before... Um, like, as a child, growing up, being in church and everything, so it's like, you read certain passages, you think it's just, oh, this is just some history, and we can learn from this lesson, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, also, you can look at the different aspects of things that are told in the Bible, and the way that they are written, like, whether it's in chronological order, or if it's just them stating certain things as fact. So, like, uh, the fact that what's her name Rachel gave birth to both Joseph and Benjamin and one of the passages it said this is all the children that uh, Rachel had and as you continue reading it tells you oh Joseph was born at this time and then Benjamin was born at this time whereas somebody who doesn't really know the story of Joseph and how he got into Egypt and everything they might think that all of the children were there all at one time so they might be confused as to why you know, um, Israel favored Joseph and why he was his favorite child. And so that, as you continue reading, it's, it's explained and it's like, oh, okay, so that's why he was his favorite child because it wasn't even Joseph. He also favored Benjamin. It's not that it was his favorite child. It's just, it was the remembrance of his favorite wife. Because you have to remember technically Israel had four wives. He had his original wife, Leah, um, her handmaid, hand servant. Um, then he got to marry Rachel, but she didn't have children in that order. Uh, she had her handmaid was also able to have children before her. So his last line of children came from Rachel. His last two children came from Rachel. So when he lost Joseph, it was like, oh my gosh, my favorite wife's child is no longer here. Um, then they had another child and then it was like, oh no, they want to take my last child for ransom. I, I like, I can't believe this. Like he was literally on the verge of dying if he was to lose, um, all of his children that that were birthed by his favorite wife. And so I'm almost at the part where they're getting to like reunite the family and everything. But it was very interesting to me, the fact that, okay, so like they sold Joseph into slavery when he was about 17 years old. And so from 17 to i don't remember how old they said he was when he started ruling over uh that area of egypt or being the person up under pharaoh basically um i don't remember what age they said but it just surprised me that when the brothers got there nobody recognized joseph nobody was like yo he low-key looks like our brother like like no one that that wasn't stated in the passages at least according to what i've read so far and I'm like, hmm, okay, so uh, they made it blatantly clear that uh, when he invited his brothers into the home, 
I said this video wasn't going to be long, but I ended up talking about what I'm learning about, so I can't promise that it's not going to be long anymore. So, yeah. But regardless, though, I just wanted to let you guys know, like, why I won't be making videos and share a couple of things, but this got deeper. So, um, when they were eating with the Egyptians, he invited his brothers into his home, and they were eating, you know, a meal together with him, the Egyptians, and his brothers. They s segregated they they said it is an it's an abomination for the egyptians to commune with the hebrews and so they know that joseph is a hebrew the egyptians do so my thing is why didn't the brothers recognize who he was because he obviously would look like them he obviously would look like their father he obviously would look like his um past mother so I don't know, maybe the name changed, because he did change his name. I don't remember what Joseph's name was changed to, but it was some sort of Egyptian name. Um, but I guess that may have threw them off, that, you know, the fact that he was ruler over all, and they were like, we sold our brother into slavery, and he probably died. So, you know, there's no possible way that this could be him, even if it did cross their minds. Like, I'm thinking that that might be it, but I'm like, you do, though have that blatant separation between Hebrews and Egyptians during that time. They said it themselves. So that was what kind of confused me because I'm like, okay, if we got this separation going on and they're not even eating together, why haven't the brothers caught on? That's my thing because I'm like, even if I did have a long lost sibling, all my siblings that I've seen from their age of 17 and older, they looked the same. You know, you might develop, you might get more muscular, you might, you know, gain weight, you might get bigger, um, your hair might be different, you know, you might have got a tan, you might have lost some color by being not in the sun, but they're in Egypt, so they're in the sun. So he probably was darker, but it's like, I, I just found that to be interesting in my reading, because I'm like, okay, y'all already know that this was y'all's daddy's favorite son, favorite child by his favorite wife. Y'all hated this man so much that you sold him in this. Y'all were going to kill him. But Judah was like, no, nah, let's not kill him. Let's at least make some money. So, you know, I just found that to be interesting. That's just my thoughts. You know, that's just one of the things that um, I, I found to be interesting in reading this. Because it, it, it ties into the, a lot of things that go on today. People are still, like, I think it was one or two years ago. My mom told me that there was a new addition to the family because they found that um, one of their brothers had another child. And so he got introduced to the family as one of their cousins and everything. And he looks like everybody. You know, he was like, oh my gosh, so that's where I get those traits from. Oh my gosh, that's why I had this particular feature. So he's in his 30s, got a whole family now. He's been, he's been reintroduced into my family on my mom's side and being welcomed. And it's just the fact that, okay, our population was way, 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 way smaller, at least according to what we know, was way smaller back then, according to how everything was going during that time. So, I mean, I just feel like they would have a lot of familiar features, or Joseph would have had a lot of familiar features that the brother should have caught on to. He should have looked just like Benjamin. So, I mean... I don't know. That's just an observation I made, though. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go, though. I'm still, like, doing laundry and uh, doing and packing and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's it's been a lot. You know, I just got back from Chicago, just had my cousin's funeral, and now I'm going to leave again and go do some fun stuff. And so it, it's just a lot of stuff going on in the midst of a lot of chaos, but I'm glad I get to get away and be by the beach because I feel like being near some um, some fresh salt water will definitely help me to regain balance in myself because, you know, it's just been it's been so much. Not even to mention all the spiritual war warfare. Oh, my gosh, the spiritual warfare. Uh, I don't even like using spiritual warfare because it's just spiritual occurrences. I, I'm not really fighting like that too much i just been protect i've been in a shield mode it's been more so like i have my bubble around me you know i have god i have abba surrounding me and protecting me from everything uh and so anything that does penetrate that bubble he allowed it to happen 
for whatever reason and I just got to deal with it at that time and so it is what it is with that I'm I'm chilling I'm cool with really everything that's going on I'm really happy he's revealed a lot of things to me within this time um, especially like it's just been very dramatic it seemed like as soon as I got off my fast the external world seemed to be way more than what it was while I was on my fast. During the springtime, it seemed like, you know, it was just like the regular everyday chaos. And then once I got off my fast, it was like extra chaos. So I don't know if that has anything to do with my fast or the timing. And the fact that I did my fast at that time prepared me for the extra chaos that's happening right now. I don't know. So, yeah, we got just a bunch of crazy stuff going on. Record high temperatures and... Uh, Oregon and Washington, which are right there next to Canada. Um, people in, um, was it Vancouver? I think it was Vancouver or another part in Canada. They were saying that it's hotter there than it is in Florida. And I'm like, how? What is going on right now? That doesn't even make any sense. Like, wait, we're talking about geography. Florida is right there by the equator getting into Central America and everything. Canada is way up here, away from the equator, going towards the North Pole, where it's known to be cold, even though it's summertime, it's still known to be pretty cold up there. Uh, I don't care what, like, everything is just weird. So, you know, for anyone in the North, though, who's experiencing crazy high temperatures, um, just do what you can. You know, prepare for the stuff that they're trying to roll out due to these um, high temperatures and blackouts and stuff like that. Um, make sure you stay prayed up, stay in your word, whatever it is that you do to connect with God. Con just, I can't even say continue. I think you guys might have to do a little bit extra. So you might want to consider going on a fast. You might want to consider um, doing a particular type of affirmation thing. So I used to do um, what I would call the 40 day affirmation challenge. I think it was inspired by uh, someone who was in the wholesale real estate investing industry and they were doing like 30 days of affirmations or something. So I did this a couple years ago. I would say 40 affirmations to myself every day for 40 days. And that was what I was doing. And it would be very transform transformational, transformative whatever type of lingo we're going to be using, it helped to transform my mindset. I might do that again, to be very honest with you. Uh, probably when I get back. But, um, yeah, that that's for you guys. Um, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I do want to touch on this a little bit. I'm not going to say too much about the situation because... To everyone who has said anything about the Lil Nas X, specifically Lil Nas X, I didn't watch the BET Awards. I didn't even know that it was yesterday because i that's how out of the loop I am. Thank goodness. Um, especially what Young Pharaoh said. I really appreciate him coming to the forefront and saying what he said. Um, I appreciate New Breed to the world over for what he has said. And other people are making commentary on the performance because it's like, it is one thing to want to be gay openly and that be your lifestyle that you practice in your own personal life. But it is another thing to put things out in the public in the way that it's being done. You have all of this Hollywood ritual stuff going on. And then not only did they disrespect the Bible in his music video... And with the shoe release. But now they have disrespected the Egyptian ancestry. And that's just, I mean, why go after everything that black people have? You know, why go after black culture? Why go after black ancestry? So I, I, I give my props to Young Pharaoh. This is the type of stuff that I'm really glad, like, he made a new YouTube channel so he could speak on these particular things. And I really appreciate that type of content. It's very constructive. It's very to the point. It's very just like, you know, cutthroat. Very like, you know, he, he came as a man and was like, you're disrespecting my culture and I don't appreciate it. No one here appreciates what you're doing. Egyptians did not practice homosexuality. That was something that the Greeks had brought into culture and they actually condemned it the same way that it was an abomination to commune with the Hebrews. Same thing with the Egyptians. So 
when you have a lot of black people who are embracing whether it be biblical truth or Egyptian truths and practices and teaching teachings and then you have Lil Nas X up here disrespecting everything that black people have in the name of LGBTQ plus community that doesn't make any logical sense post on your Instagram about you and your boyfriend you know um vlog on youtube about you and your boyfriend you don't have to make your performances you don't have to make your art about you being gay that is i mean i don't see how that's constructive for like in the way that he's doing it if he went up there and if y'all saw that ugg commercial with the ugg shoes and everything if he went up there and did a huge sponsorship for ugg and his drag gear that he was wearing in that ugg commercial I think there would be much less of an uproar about it, but it's the fact that he's bringing in culture. He's bringing in people's religious beliefs, people's spiritual beliefs, and making a mockery of it. That's just blatant disrespect, and like, you're shooting yourself. Lil Nas X, you're shooting- because I, I made videos, not necessarily in your defense, but to get people off of your back in a particular way when it comes to the outrage of Christians, because they were being religious and they weren't looking past it. Now that people have been able to look past uh, certain actions that you are doing for attention, this is obviously a play for attention, you've gone too far. You really have just gone too far. Like, I didn't think he was going to drag out this song and this narrative all year long. Like, I don't think that this is the end of it. This is just the BET Awards. We're in June. So the next award shows that he's invited to sing at, he's not going to be singing Old Town Road. He's not going to be singing, um, what's, what's that song he did with the baby? Oh, uh, what's that song? Just say to me what you want from me. Like that song. He's not going to be doing songs like that anymore. Everything's Montero. Everything's about I'm gay, I'm gay. You know, the, these people are trans. Uh, those people are bisexual. Those people are um, non-binary. Like, make it about you again. Your art isn't even about you anymore. I don't know if you, you know, if this per particular performance was you doing the, the most to finally get what you need to get out of Hollywood. Maybe that is what it is and that was another ritual that was going on. I don't know. But just make your art about you. You are not a gay person. No one knew you as a gay person. You were a little Nas X and you cool guy. We appreciated your art. We love, I mean, a lot of people still love your music. It's not even about you being gay. I like your music still, but I don't even think I can listen to it because of the spirit behind you at this point. So just be you, man. You don't have to conform to what these people are telling you to do. I don't know what type of contract he's under either, so... Uh, he might be still locked in for another couple of years and doing crazy stuff like this. That's my dog. I'm going to go ahead and go, you guys. He wants to get back in the house. But yeah, that was my little spiel. I'm not going to say much about it at all because Young Pharaoh said enough. New Breed said enough. Other people are saying other things about it. and they're, they're, they're saying everything that I really need to say. They're saying everything that needs to be said, especially the fact that they're men and addressing another man. He, even though you're young, Lil Nas, you, you're still a dude. Unless you decide to transition, then that's a whole different situation. But for from our understanding, you're just a gay man. So, I mean, it is what it is. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go, you guys. Shalom royalty. I'll see you in the next one. Taura.